Hey, what's popping, everyone? So in this video, I'm going to tell you the top five JavaScript applications for spas. And these aren't any kind of spas that you just go in for a hot swim. No, these are single page application spas. So a spa is something that is statically hosted in something kind of like an Amazon Web Services S3 bucket, which is going to give you the statically hosted, I guess, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So companies are moving towards these single page application spas because it's simply cheaper for the company to give you a spa. <laughs> it's kind of weird how I keep saying spa. And then, and it's also, also oftentimes faster to give you these single page applications instead of having a server host the website for them. So watching this video will give you a good grasp of some of the frameworks that are um, being used in the front end development and it could potentially help you get a job someday if you want to work in front-end development, or maybe if you want to build your own website, this could definitely help you out as well. So I put a lot of effort researching all these frameworks over the years, and if you could help me out and triple click that like button, it would help me do wonders for the YouTube, al YouTube algorithm. Thanks. And then one word of one known warning before I get into the meat of this video is that of course I'm going to be biased in which frameworks are the best. So just take them these five as kind of like my opinion. And while of course the ones near the the like one and two place are I think what I think is going to be better, but that opinion can differ among many people. And most of these, the performance differences aren't very big. So it's really up to the opinion which one you used. So I'll also try to take into account things like popularity spikes, like suddenly some uh, framework goes up in popularity and one goes down. So I'll try to take into that and whether it's open source or if it was developed or backed by a large company. All right, let's get started. So number five is going to be Vue, which is, has begun to spike recently over the, like the last year, over starting with 2019. So it's an open source progressive framework and you can use Vue's CLI to start basic projects very quickly. So Vue isn't as widespread, that's why it's number five. While it is currently being used by some large companies, it's not too many large companies. So some notable ones could be like Nintendo, Louis Vuitton, you know, like the clothing stuff. Uh, so Google uses it a little bit. Of course, Google is a big company, so only like a subsection of Google is going to use it. So it's Google's career platform, if you're interested in going into that or something like that. So BMW and Adobe will also use Vue. So there's also... Um, Chrome plugins for a lot of these cool uh, single page framework application libraries. I just said a bunch of buzzwords there, didn't I? So there's a Chrome plugin for the uh, Vue, which will allow you to inspect its data. So I also want to show you the website for Vue. All right, so here we are on Vue's website. And it looks pretty good. You can, you can kind of judge how um, a framework is based on how their website looks. And Vue's website is looking OK. I mean, they got their the companies that sponsor it and stuff like that. And I mean, it's it's okay. I mean, I, I'd say it's usable. We'll give it a, a good seven out of 10. <laughs> and then you can also sort, see all, it gives you like good doc documentation as well for um, how to install it. It's pretty a long page, a long single page application. <laughs> all right, let's go on to the next one. So actually, before I move on, so an interesting point about uh, Vue is also, this is where I got the progressive framework piece before. So Vue is, you can use it and integrate it with other libraries pretty easily. And of course, you can use it with single page applications, with modern tooling and supporting libraries. So that's, that's all cool and all. All right, so let's move on to number four. So we're going to talk about Ember. So Ember is number four. So it's a front end model view controller framework. So MVC. So it's driven by HTML templates. So only valid HTML templates and the body tag can be used. So it's kind of like a downside. And there's no script tags that can be used with Ember. So you normally think of people like adding like script tags, which you can include JavaScript in. So if you like doing that, then maybe don't use Ember. Um, so Ember also has a data layer called the Ember data, which allows you to get data from multiple sources at once and keep the models up to date. So kind of like if you want to call APIs and stuff, you want to use Ember data to do that. So, um, so some no notable companies that use Ember are Netflix, LinkedIn, Apple, and Microsoft. And let me show you Ember's site. All right, here we are on Ember's site. Every, as you can see, everything's on fire with Ember's. They have this little 
Ember thingy here, and you can see all the companies they did. Uh, so batteries are included. So I guess the idea about what Ember's trying to he show here is that they want to like get you started off with building like websites really quickly. So they're having a lot of support for routing with data layers and testing because testing is important. And of course, performance. So performance for them is the fourth one down. After all, I didn't even mention build pipelines, built-in development environments. So that's very important to have. So te test or performance is the fifth priority for them, and then upgrades is the last priority for them. So they want to be stability, um, and they release every six weeks. So that's that's cool. All right, let's move on to number three. All right, number three on my list is Backbone.js. So Backbone.js is a single page application framework, SPA, and it's dependent on jQuery. So that's that could raise some red flags for some people that don't like jQuery because jQuery is kind of getting old and doesn't really interact well with some other frameworks. So it's open source with its code um, being hosted on GitHub under like MIT license. So you can go ahead and take that down and change it however you want. Um, so you re represent your data with Backbone.js and model models, which can be saved to the server. So that's really an interesting piece of that. If you want to save like some piece of thing to the server. So that can also be used for validation as well. So this model is kind of similar to React's components, such um, that when you change events and models, they'll or like when you change data, it'll eventually like trickle down to what is being showed on the screen. So these changes are listed to in something called views, which are small chunks of UI, so kind of like components with React, if you know much about React. So, and then there's collections, which have multiple related models in them. So it's trying to really to separate the business logic away from the, like the UIs. So, so like the data that isn't really related to like how it's styled. And then let's see what the website looks like. All right, here we are on Backbone.js's website. And I must say, this is probably the worst one we've seen, and probably <laughs> out of the ones we've seen, because it kind of looks like it's from the early 2000s. Like, look how small this text is compared to this. It's like 10 times bigger. They really want to show you the, the title. They don't really care about showing you this text. <laughs> you can zoom in for that. That's, that's what I'm getting from this. So, and then like, they write literal paragraphs, like essays here on the getting started. I mean, they do add some cool, um, diagrams of what happens like there's the model which a change will appear and then it'll, it'll render out to the view and then that's what the user will look at with it. and then they can change the model and that can go to like a database or an api or something and then it's the model and view explanation so i mean they, they explain their stuff it's just, it's just they really use a lot of words and this is like a big turnoff for i guess some people a lot of words people don't like reading <laughs> But here's a, here's a, um, a collection with a bunch of models saving to a database. And then that will change the view once you change the collections or models. And that's what will render out to the user. So that's cool and all. And, and then they have some cool other stuff with rendering, multiple views. And honestly, it's, it's a single page application because everyone's here on the single page. Honestly, I would have put... Um, Backbone JS <laughs> on lower down in the list. If it weren't for these cool looking diagrams to explain what's going on with um, this, like on the front page. I mean, and of course, I would have put it lower as well with jQuery because I don't like jQuery, but that's a different story. Let's go on to the next one. All right, now we are moving on to the cool ones. So, Angular is, um, and I put the latest in the brackets that around Angular because. There used to be versions of Angular that were, I guess, very popular, but they weren't very, um, I guess, good. And they changed a lot. I think it was around Angular 2. They changed a lot of from that version. And of course, different versions are going to be different <laughs> uh, on a number of different levels. So Angular is backed and developed by Google. So, or yeah, it was developed by Google. So. Of course, there's going to be a lot of changes, and I believe it's open source as well. And it has um, a Chrome extension called Augury, which helps to debug visually. So you can use Chrome. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Chrome, Google is made by Chrome as well. All right, now we're looking at Angular's website here. So just starting out, 
Um, I guess this is... It's, it's pretty basic, I would say. <laughs> pretty basic of a website. It's not like the other websites where you had like a million things on one page. And I think the reason behind that is the second thing down the list was speed and performance. If we looked at like Embers, I think, it was like fifth on the list was performance. Angular has performance number two, which could definitely be an impact to some people. And I guess it makes sense because Google really cares about performance. So they also care about multiple platforms here, I guess with mobile, um, native mobile, native to desktop, they really care at Angular about getting all that in one single platform. So let's look at the getting started. So maybe that'll give us some more information if to tell you if you want to use Angular or not. So I guess we'll take, click get it started twice. So it's, it's relatively straightforward to install. It's kind of like most of the frameworks, just use NPM to install it. Yeah. So it, one thing about Angular I do want to note is that it's usually you need like HTML for each different like component, you need an HTML file, a CSS file, and then like a JavaScript file. And that could really add up to a lot of files, especially if you don't like using that many files. File, file, file. <laughs> I don't know why I said file there so many times. But um, I don't know. I found that kind of be like a turn off to use that many different files for each different component. All right, so I want to show you, I guess, the basics or fundamentals of Angular to give you some more information on it. So they divide all their stuff up into components, of course. And then the really unique piece of Angular is something called data binding, which kind of basically allows you to kind of bind data to what people see on the screen. So you display your data to a user by binding controls in the HTML template to the data properties of the component class. All right, here we are, number one, React. And I put Redux because some people say that React isn't really a framework alone, but when you add Redux to it, it is a framework. So it is number one on the single page spa frameworks. And the reason behind it is because it is so widely used. And of course, it's backed by Facebook, one of the largest companies and that use like UI. So you would know because when you go to Facebook and maybe Instagram and many other companies that Facebook owns, they have such a great user interface and user experience. And one of the reasons behind that is because they use React. So people like, um, it's, it's the most popular uh, front end framework and for this reason. And it's so quick and it's, they're pushing out updates very quickly to it. And they're pushing out these updates quickly because people put in their feedback and people see, oh, uh, people need this and this. So or people will push changes to React very quickly. So like uh, over the like, last couple of years, they added a change called hooks, which kind of like was the um, lifecycle functions from before, kind of like they had component did mount. But now you can use use state to update like components very easily instead. And you don't have to switch between them because they're both supported, which is great. So for example, you can use some um, a hook called use state to set the state for that component such that when the state updates, the state <laughs> when the state updates, it'll uh, update the component and that'll force a re-render, which will change something on the screen, which is very important. You want something to change. So another example that you can use is use effect, which is kind of similar to what component did mount used to do, or it still does, it still exists. So that once the component mounts and once the component is created, you can do something useful like calling an API or setting up some data so that the, I guess, the component can now re-render properly the right data. So, and also uh, React has a uh, Chrome plugin which you can use to inspect what data is what in the component, which is very useful. And I thought I should say something about Redux since it's like on the screen. So Redux is a way to store data such that you don't have to pass data from component to component, but instead you can take it um, all the data from like a singular store so that it can be given to um, all the components more equally. So some there's also the context API, which is from React itself. Redux is something outside of React. So context API does something similar, which you can use to store data as well. 
And that is the end of this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, can you give it a like and maybe subscribe? And I'll talk to you later. Peace.